I'm Dr. Gerald Lees. Welcome to Health Center from Downstate Medical Center. Previously, you might have heard the discussion that we've been discussing here, a uh, uh, session before concerning man, purpose here on, life, on this earth, planet, you know, all the way from when the first DNA started, that breathing human being, up to now, I think sometimes we have the arrogance to think that we are the last thing on this earth. Unfortunately, uh, when you look at the earth being millions and millions of years old, you know it's going to be millions and millions of years longer. And we are only a flash in this beautiful planet. Unless something hits it and destroys it completely or the sun knocks it out of its way. But right now we think and have the arrogance to think that we are the last word. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is not true today as it hasn't been true thousands of years ago when uh, great prophets and philosophers roamed the earth and had their thoughts about the earth and, and the meaning of man. Enough books have been written on it. You become very uh, uh, humble when you go to the library and just look at the books that have been written about man and his relationship to man. And so uh, what we are discussing today is limited only by our knowledge of what we have experienced or what we have studied and not to lead you into any other belief, but to have you to open your mind to think what you think of uh, your God or whoever you worship, or if you don't worship. So I want to welcome you, Dr. Hutton. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, it's so nice having you. Maybe uh, to get off with that the beginning, just so our audience would know who you are, maybe a little background on yourself, maybe, maybe where you were born and raised and how you got into th theology. <laughs> well, I'll cut that down to a couple minutes. I was born in St. Mary's, Pennsylvania in 1947, uh, raised around towns in Pennsylvania and upstate New York. Moved 11 times before I was 21, so I can't think of any particular place at home, but uh, mostly in the Northeast. I went to college in Philadelphia, the University of Pennsylvania, and then uh, went to graduate school at Harvard. Well, there was an important interlude there. I went into the Peace Corps. Okay. And I spent uh, two years in Ethiopia in the Peace Corps right. and then went back to Ethiopia in 73 uh, to do a study on baboons. Mm. And uh, that was just before Haile Selassie was uh, overthrown. Right. And then I got a job doing research in anesthesiology. And you might wonder how that's connected. I'd have to say it isn't, but <laughs> I've been doing it for the past 25 years, so it's working out. Mm -hmm. Anesthesiology. Yeah. Yeah, but I wouldn't say that's really far removed from what you were talking about in the theology. Well, how did you get <laughs> the, the theology point of, uh, that you... Well, it, in... In graduate school, I uh, was a student of anthropology. Okay. And I went into anthropology because my experiences in Ethiopia All right. led me to want to understand mm -hmm. what I learned there, why those people are so different from the culture that I came from, mm -hmm. and in many ways more fundamental and more representative of where we came from. Mm -hmm. So I figured anthropology might be the place to look. I, in preparation, I read Darwin's books, especially The Origin of Species. Mm -hmm. Gained some perspective there. And after I finished uh, my PhD, one day, I was invited to a, uh, a Passover dinner, mm -hmm. and I was not at all knowledgeable about the Bible and what Passover was, a major part of my own culture. Mm -hmm. So I sat down with a copy of the Bible that I had to, to read about it, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't seem quite so ignorant when right. I got to dinner. Right. Well, I spent the next five years reading the Bible, most mornings. Um, for two to three hours. Mm -hmm. Get up at four or three, do that, come to work. Um, and I read the Bible three times, slowly, straight through, beginning mm -hmm. to end. Took notes. It finally gelled for me. 
It's not such a complicated book. It's actually fairly clear if you don't go into it with a bias. Mm -hmm. That is, if you're not either a believer nor an antagonist right. toward it. And that led me to the Talmud, which I read extensively, and the Midrash Rabbah, and other works that I was able to check my insights on the Bible mm -hmm. with, because those works were written by people who understood the original language as their their first language. Right. And those books have all been adequately translated mm -hmm. uh, into English, as has the Bible in most of its versions. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how I got to that interest and how I've pursued it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, I have a book on my desk, or in my collection of books, I meditate in the morning, and mm -hmm. I have a whole collection of books I pull from. Whatever my hand lands on, I pull that one and read it, you know, and read it. And there's a Dr. Turnbull, mm. an anthropologist from England, right. went to study the tribe in uh, Africa, Mtubi tribe in Zaya, Africa. Mm -hmm. And he wrote the most, mag most magnificent book on, he said, if there's anybody that should be considered human, humanity, this tribe exemplified humanity. Mm -hmm. From the standpoint that the way they treated their, the forest, the way they treated one another, the way they treated the earth, he felt that they showed such, in fact, he gave a, good, a little good example of children playing tug of war with a, a rope. And if one side was losing, the one side would come from the other winning side and help the losing side. Mm. Rather than to say, we won, it was a transfer of energy to the other side. So mm -hmm. it, it equal, equal balance, so nobody won, in a sense. So mm -hmm. it cut out the competitiveness which I think so much in America we are so competitive, in a sense. Well, yes, we are competitive in America, but there is a natural tendency of humans to become cooperative in groups, sometimes small groups like groups of children playing, yeah. sometimes large groups like nations. But one of the primary purposes of people cooperating in a group has very often been to enhance their ability to compete with other groups. Well, that's true. That's true. And work like Dr. Turnbull's and many others, Margaret mm -hmm. Mead, for example, mm -hmm. has a tendency to romanticize mm -hmm. the people that they study. Mm -hmm. I remember in an instance where we were discussing in a lecture about the uh, Kung San in uh, the uh, called Bushmen here in uh, mm -hmm. South Africa, and how peaceful they were, and how they had uh, how murder was almost never heard of among themselves. Right. And and one of the students looked into the ethnographies and found out that there had in fact been accounts of three murders in the previous ten years. And he calculated the rate of murder per 10,000 persons per year on that basis. Mm -hmm. And it was higher than the murder rate in the Bronx in 1967. Mm -hmm. 